Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to look at the PPR of the APCSP create test. All right, let's get going. So starting in 2023, 2024, the APCSP create task consists of three things that you will turn in. The first is a PDF of your code, and that's the same as before. The second is a video of your code running, and that's the same as before. And the third is something called the personalized project reference or PPR. And this is new for 2023, 2024. Here are the instructions for the PPR from the AP board. The basic idea is that the PPR is made up of excerpts from your code, and those excerpts cannot contain any comments. No comments, super important, no comments. On the day of your exam, your AP coordinator will print out that PPR for you. And then you'll take that PPR into the exam where you'll use it as a reference. It's sort of like taking an open note test where you answer the questions with the open notes of your PPR. You might ask why it's done this way. Well, in the years before 2023, 2024, it used to be that you'd write your code and you'd answer your questions and you'd submit them all before a certain deadline. But starting in, I don't know, 2022, 2023, ChatGPT started to become a thing. People would write their code and answer the questions with ChatGPT. And so this is a way to ensure academic integrity of the AP exam. The idea here is folks who wrote their code with ChatGPT are really gonna have a hard time answering those questions for the AP exam in person. So right here, I'm going to show a quick summary of the PPR and I'll come back and do more in detail later. So the PPR is four screenshots of your code. First screenshot is the screenshot of your procedure, function, or method. The second screenshot is a screenshot of the call of your procedure, function, or method. The third screenshot is your list, dictionary, or object being created or being populated. Here, you have to be careful that you're not just showing an empty list or empty dictionary being created. Those will not count. And the last screenshot, the fourth one, is your list, dictionary, or object being used. All right, so now for my recommendations on the PPR. My first recommendation is that you use the Baker Frank website for both your PDF and your screenshots. Now, I know in the past, I've suggested that you use Google Docs, but a couple of things have made me change my mind and I'll explain those later. This site, the link is in the description below, is really easy to use. You just copy and paste your code into the top. That will make the code show up in the bottom with line numbers. And then you click this print button here to generate your PDF. On Windows, you save as PDF, and this will save your file as a PDF. One thing to point out is that the Baker Frank website gives you line numbers for your code. And this is going to make answering questions a lot easier. For example, if you get a question asking you about the iteration in your code, it's easy. You just say my for loop on line three. If you get a question about asking you to describe the algorithm in such a way that somebody else could rewrite it, this is going to be very easy if you have line numbers. For instance, on line two, create an empty list called new words. On line three, loop over words in my word list with a four. In line four, I'm going to check if the first two characters of the word that I'm on are S and M. And then on line five, if it's so, I will add this word to the new list. So hopefully you can see that with line numbers, describing your code is very easy and it's very clear to the grader. And the more clear it is to the grader, the better chance that you're gonna get the score on the exam. The next tip has to do with screenshots for the PPR. As a reminder, you need four screenshots. The procedure, the procedure being called, the list being created, and the list being used. The Baker Frank website has highlighting capabilities, which you should use. So here's an example. I'm doing list.1, which is the screenshot of the list being created. So what I want to do is highlight the exact line of code that I'm talking about with the list being created. And I want to screenshot code around it to provide context, including the line numbers. The highlight is to show the grader that you know what you're talking about. And the code around it is to provide context, which will help you answer the questions you'll need to answer when the AP exam comes along. The Baker Frank site also allows multiple highlights. So here I am picking a different list for my list.1 screenshot, where I have three highlights of data being added to the list. Here's another example of code highlighting for list.2. This is the screenshot for the list being used. Again, I'm gonna provide the code in context, which allows me to better answer the question and the grader to know what I'm talking about when I answer the question. Here I have side-by-side -side code screenshots. 
on the code where I'm providing context for my code, I can provide a very, very specific and exact answer that I can't provide if my screenshot is only two lines long. So again, the context around your screenshot is to help you give a more specific answer that will help you score highly on the exam. My next tip is to be sure that your screenshots are big. So when you do screen captures of your code, be sure you only screen capture your code, not the empty space. So this first one, the screen capture is the code and nothing else. And in the second one, I have a lot of extra space when I screen capture my code. And this is what it looks like on the digital portfolio. The screen capture where you don't capture any extra space looks big. And the screen capture where you have a lot of extra space looks tiny and unreadable to the grader, which you do not want. So again, don't capture any extra space on your screen capture. The second is that you want to make sure your lines are not too long. So I'll show you what it looks like on the digital portfolio. Here it is with lines of about 100 characters each. And here it is with lines of more than 100 characters each. And you see the one with over 100 characters per line is going to look tiny. And when it looks tiny, it's going to be unreadable to the grader. And if it's unreadable to the grader, that's bad for you. Now the AP board has some other tips about like font sizes, uh, all this stuff. You know, I found that this actually has very little impact on how readable my code is. By far and away, the biggest things that matter are not doing a screen capture of extra space and two, not making your lines too long. The last suggestion for the PPR is going to be for you to be sure that you do not have comments in your code. So if you had comments in your code, you could have comments like this, which help you answer the questions that you'll need to answer for the AP exam. The AP board will consider this to be cheating and you could have your score zeroed out. So again, no comments in your PPR. After you make your PPR, you'll want to practice answering some questions. Remember, during the exam, you'll be bringing your PPR in with you to answer questions that they give you on the spot. And if you can't answer questions beforehand, you definitely won't be able to answer them on the spot. So here are some links, which are in the description below, some practice questions and rubrics that the AP board have given out in the past. I'm going to flash a whole bunch of practice questions and checklist things to mark off. If you're really serious about the exam, you should be sure you can answer every one of these questions and that every one of these things is checked off. I'll zoom through them kind of quick. So pause the video as needed. So that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.